Let's talk about motion specs. Specs are a critical part of this process. It doesn't matter how amazing your motion is, if a developer or an engineer cannot build it, it will die in a folder somewhere on your computer. And we don't want that to happen. Let me walk you through what it looks like to create specs from your motion. Let's dive in. Here we are inside of After Effects, and I've already created this interaction of typing a message and sending it inside of this Messenger app. We ultimately want an engineer and a developer to be able to build this in the actual app. We can't export this as a Lottie file and just plug and play because that's not how Lottie files work. What a developer needs to do is take all of this motion information and hand code it into the app to make this come to life. There's a few ways we could approach this here. We could export a video here, send it off to a developer and say, hey, let me know when it's done that will usually yield very terrible results because there's a lot of things inside of this animation like the timing the duration the easing that is not obvious to someone who is not a motion designer and even to a motion designer looking at this video would they know what type of easing this is using here you would get a general sense but your easings would not be super accurate to these like cubic bezier values so the other way we could approach this is actually revealing those bits and pieces of information in a motion design spec the specific piece of this motion that we're wanting to spec out is what happens when you tap the send button we can see that this starts to fade away this starts to change colors we actually see the actual message moving from the bottom to the top and fading in while it does that so in looking at our animation we need to make sure that all of our keyframes are lined up logically that they are rounded whole numbers that there's no delays or offsets that don't make sense and don't really impact the motion in a positive way so let's go through and make sure that our animation is cleaned up one great way of making sure that everything is timed with nice round numbers is to use is to make sure your nudging amounts inside of after effects is set to 50 or 100 millisecond increments and you can check out my other video on how to set that up on your after effects and so i know that if i go forward one two three that that is 150 milliseconds and one way that we can actually fact check ourselves is if we use the plugin called inspector space time we can click here and get a new counter layer let's go ahead and take this thing and we're just going to make this huge right here we're going to change the start to the start of our animation and the end can be where it is and so we can see that if we go from the start all the way to the end that it's happening this entire interaction is happening over 300 milliseconds we can see we can drill in a little bit deeper on some of our keyframes and we can see that the send button changes from blue to gray and that happens over 50 milliseconds we can see that this message fade in happens over 150 milliseconds but the position happens over 300 milliseconds what else do we have here we can see that the placeholder text and the input text does a little cross fade so the input text fades out over 50 milliseconds and the placeholder text fades in over 150 milliseconds so now that the durations and the spacing and timing of everything is nice and tightened up and neat in round numbers Let's go ahead and capture this somewhere that our developers can easily come in, take a look and implement and code on there. We as motion designers understand all of this information. We see the keyframes, we understand the durations, we see the easing, all those sorts of things. This is not a familiar place for an engineer or developer to come in to your After Effects file and start diving into all of the durations and things here. I'm going to capture everything in this slides deck. If you saw my motion mocks video, you can see that I'm using a similar process here. This is just a very easy way to put all of our specs and mocks into one place to capture feedback, to see comments, to keep it live and update the same link. As a general rule of thumb, it's a great idea to keep your motion mocks and your motion specs separate so that your mocks do not confuse your developers or engineers with different ideas and messy animations when they're trying to just look for what's ready to be implemented in code. So I've already dropped in my GIF here of the animation and it's just cropped to where it is tapping the send button and then we're seeing that send animation happening there. Right here is where we're actually going to write in all of our specs. So we'll start with like the title of what this specific animation is and then we'll jump into all the different specs. To make things slightly easier, let's show these things at the same time. And let's start with the piece of motion that has the longest duration. And what that's going to be is this message layer right here. And that takes a total of 300 seconds. And so we know that this entire animation will start and stop within 300 milliseconds. So we're going to do total duration is 300 milliseconds. We want to communicate how long is this animation going to take from start to finish. And now we're going to go in and actually look at each one of these layers. And we're going to write up all of those specs here. So we'll start with the message layer and it's going to have a position y movement upwards 200 pixels to final position 
the reason that I'm writing that specific piece of motion that way is if we actually come in here and look at our animation, you can see that it starts somewhere down here. Uh, the pixels that we have here starts here at 368 and it ends here at 173. Those are the pixel measurements of what's happening here in After Effects and that very well may differ from what is happening in the final app build. Maybe they're not using pixels, maybe they're using percentages. And so we just want to give some guidance of like, you're going to have a static Figma that shows the final position of where a new message goes. And so from that position, it's going to be 200 pixels down to give like a rough estimate, and it's going to move into that final position. And so that's why I write the spec like this. It's a little bit more loose, but I'm using nice round numbers. It moves upwards 200 pixels to final position. And I'm communicating that that's happening on the Y axis. That specific piece of motion is going to have a duration of 300 milliseconds. This is going to be the cubic Bezier value that I'm pulling straight from the flow plugin. And that's the easing that I have applied right here. An alternative way to handle the easings inside of your specs is to actually name them. Maybe this is like the standard easing or accelerated easing or decelerated easing. Make a page at the very start of your spec deck and just communicate what each of those are. Here, instead of writing out all the cubic Bezier values every single time, you can just say, hey, this is actually just standard. And they can reference it. Maybe they make a token or a variable that they're always referencing that specific easing just so it creates specs that are a little bit easier to read and parse through. For now, we will leave the cubic Bezier values. We have an opacity value that goes from zero all the way to 100 over the span of 150 milliseconds. So let's also write that. So we'll say opacity zero to 100% and duration is 150, 150 milliseconds. Easing is linear and that's it. And so this is all the animation information that we have specifically for this message layer. So you see that we only have position and opacity, and here we have position and opacity. Okay, this may feel like a very tedious process. But if you make sure that your animations are using nice round numbers for durations, consistent easings, very intentional delays and cascades, it makes this process much, much easier. However, there is a plugin that makes it even faster, and that is Inspector Spacetime. And with Inspector Spacetime, essentially, I can go ahead and highlight all of my keyframes, click Get Spec from Keys, copy it, and let's go ahead and just make a new text box over here, and I can paste that in. It essentially took everything that I just hand wrote and pasted it in there for me automatically based off of the keyframe data. So you can see this significantly speeds up the process, but there are some things that need to be finessed a little bit, specifically when we're looking at the position. And so this one, when we look at this position movement here, this is a little bit hard for you to parse through of what does it actually mean. This is a little bit easier. And so if we actually just overwrite ours with that one, then this starts to be a very clear motion spec here. Something that's important is just make sure that you go through, make sure that your layers are named appropriately. They will match whatever layer names that you have here inside of After Effects. It's always a good practice to make sure everything in After Effects is cleaned up first before you start writing the specs. It'll make the specking process much cleaner, much quicker. And so we can go ahead and just delete this thing, move this over here, and boom. Our specs are basically done. They're written out. They're pretty clear to read. If an engineer or developer came in here, they would understand how to read this, the durations, the easings, all of those sorts of things. Um, and this is a really when we clear look at way to communicate what's going on. You can also see I have a GIF here. And a GIF is great as just a quick visual reference to see what's going on here. But sometimes a video is a little bit easier when an engineer and a developer is going through and actually recreating your specs into motion in code because it allows you to be able to scrub through the timeline. Like just like we have the ability here in After Effects to really scrub through and see frame by frame what is happening. It's helpful sometimes for a developer or an engineer to have that same capability. What I would recommend is link in here to an actual video or embed a video directly in here. Another thing that can be helpful is to actually export a version of this interaction that is slowed down significantly. And so there is less of a need to scrub through a video. You can kind of just watch kind of a slow-mo GIF of the interaction and be able to pick up on more things that are happening in the motion. So a way to easily do that, just take your composition, drop it into a new comp, right click this and reveal stretch, which is right under where the camera can see. And you'll see that you have this option here. You're going to take this and stretch it all the way maybe to 300 or 400% something that feels nice 
and then you want to scrub through make sure that you have your specific part of the animation that you want to show which would be right about here and all that and right about here and so you can even stretch it a little bit more and let's see what that looks like when we look at when we look at and when that's look nice at, because it slows everything down so it's a lot easier to see what's going on here so let's cap that off at five seconds and go ahead and render that out inside of our slides deck let's just go ahead and move this over duplicate it and create a, another spot where we can put in our half speed let's grab our gif and when we look at it right in there so now we have real time and we have something slowed down and that just gives a better look at the at what is happening in the interaction you kind of catch the fade a little bit more you catch the fade out of the input text and the fade in of the placeholder text the color change of the submit button um, everything just starts to look a little bit more clearer when you slow it down. We would never want to implement it this low because that's very disruptive to the user experience, but it is helpful for your engineer or developer to just understand this better. So you now have a completed motion spec. Now the question is, what do you do with the motion spec? You could very easily just comment in here and say, hey, dev. You could easily make a comment here, tag your developer, say, hey, it's done, ready to go. And this is really where your relationship with your engineering partner or your developer partner really comes into play of you knowing what their current skill sets are with implementing motion. If they need a walkthrough, if they're very good and skilled at it, whenever I hand off my motion to a new partner that I have not worked with before, I make sure to always schedule a kickoff meeting or a handoff meeting where I bring them into this deck, I show them this, I walk them through what all of these things mean, what do these layer names refer to, what do the durations mean, how to use an easing. You may be working with an incredibly intelligent developer, but sometimes motion specs are something that, that some developers are just not used to, and so it's always helpful for you to walk them through how you've written things out, why you've written them in certain ways, and pointing out things that they may have missed. Make sure that you know that there's like a slight delay of the placeholder text. It doesn't just come in immediately, because if it did that, it would overlap with the input text and we don't want to have the text overlapping we want it to be faded out and then completely faded out first and then fade in the placeholder text so it's helpful to have those conversations to walk your developer through all the different nuances of the the interaction and of the transition remember this process is not a hand it off and just hope for the best you really need to make sure that you have a great communicating relationship with your developer or engineer that you're checking in on them seeing progress giving some qa along the process to make sure that you're catching things before things launch to code or to the beta version or whatever. Understanding that you are the motion expert. You have eyes that are trained to see the things that other people may not see and to make sure that you're adding value in there during that handoff process, making sure that things are built to spec. And that is how you approach motion specs. This is a very simple, but very powerful and helpful way to start approaching your motion specs to make sure things are communicated clearly from you to your engineers to your developers and that you get what you created into the final product looking amazing every time i'll catch y'all next time